Hey Siri, what's on my calendar for today? Today, you have the 5 EP podcast. Would you like to keep it on your calendar? 5 EP? Yeah! Welcome to the 5 EP podcast. Interviews and conversations to guide the genesis of personal development. Mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, and social. The five pillars of living a five exclamation point life. On now with your host, Alex Petrowski. Welcome to another episode of the 5 EP podcast. Joining me today is CEO of Plant Revolution Apparel and life coach extraordinaire, Rick Moschel. I know you talk about having clients who really disregard that aspect of life all the way up until now they don't have work and now they don't know what to do because they haven't fostered and nurtured those relationships throughout throughout life up until then. So I love your feedback on on that aspect and for somebody who is a high achiever and doesn't put much emphasis on that on social life i really like to you know when it comes to my clients i really like to talk to them about not being defined by your job and that was you know i'll give a perfect example really quick was you know somebody like me who was in the bar business for 26 years I constantly get questions from all my friends or, or different, you know, customers that I'll see out on the streets. They're like, hey, do you miss it? Do you miss it? It's got to be crazy not doing that anymore. You know, that was your life for so long. One of the things that I've even I've practiced before I even knew what life coaching was, was I always unplugged from my job. I did not own the bar. So no matter what, when I left the bar, I unplugged. And I went out and I did my hobbies. I did all the things that made me happy, whether it was something physical activity, something nature, something with friends, something with a loved one, whatever it was, I always filled my life with things outside of that spectrum. So then once I got out of the business, it's funny, even my fiance will ask me, you know, do you she actually just recently asked me because this is actually crazy enough. This weekend is my one year anniversary of getting out of the business, quite literally. And she had asked me, you know, now that you're coming around your one year anniversary, you know, do you miss it all? And I'm like, I don't even remember being in it. Like, I remember all the things and I remember being a part of it. But I unplugged the day I got out of the business and I went on with my life. And that's one thing that I always challenge my clients to. And I challenge anybody, client or not client, just in general, find different hobbies, find things that you love, whether it's, you know, if, if you have friends, take the time to think about that. You know, a gentleman I was just talking to, who's a coach for a, for a UFC fighter, he's actually a psychologist, he's a lawyer, he's all these things, and he fills his life with all these different things, and he was actually talking to me, and he was like, man, he's like, you know, I used to I used to take the time to call different friends and just have good conversations with them. He's like, I realized I don't do that anymore. So even, you know, him being, you know, all the way up here in what he does, and me, you know, being in the, in the first, you know, couple of years of what I'm doing, I even looked at him, I still challenge him. I was like, well, you know, I challenge you to this week, get on the phone, take an hour of each day and start to call people and start to reconnect. And it was funny because I saw him later that week and he looked at me, he was like, man, he's like, I actually called my mom. I called my cousin. I called my good buddy from back in the day. He's like, we had great conversations. And I feel really good that he did that. He was like, thank you. And you never think about how quickly you can get caught up in your life, caught up in your job, caught up in the stresses of what you have going on, instead of thinking about unplugging and living and living and living. You know, I, you know, quite often, you know, and this happened in my family, where I love my, I love my family, I love my father to death, but my father was defined by his job, admittingly, and it didn't happen, he didn't admit to it, till later on when I had a life coaching session with him, just me and him digging deep into his childhood, and I had realized that he was not seen, he was not truly special in his life till he was in this, in his profession, where he was a, he was a teacher and a dean of students for, you know, 40 plus years, and there was, you know, a situation that happened at the high school where he had to leave the high school, and he kind of shut down, and he really did define himself by that job. So when he didn't have that job anymore, he was in limbo trying to find things to do. And I challenged him to, you know, go out and, you know, meet some people or go find new hobbies, do new things, which is truly why I, 
I stress so heavily, don't define yourself by your job. It's amazing that you have a job. It's amazing that you have to put a lot of effort into it. And some people have to work a lot more than others. But just remember that if you're in a position to where you don't own it and have to think about it all day long, even if you still have to be a part of it outside of when you clock out, still every moment that you can take that to have relationships with your friends, have relationships with with physical activity, have relationships with nature, have relationships with hobbies, have relationships with things outside of there so that you truly are not defined so that if and when you get to a point in your life where you retire, don't feel like you're retiring from that and I don't have anything now. Now you're retiring and you have this list of things that you can do. And it's almost like almost challenge yourself to make a vision board as to what retirement looks like. And so when retirement comes, you can look at your vision board and be like, I don't, I'm not in limbo about what I really want to do right now. I actually have a whole vision board right now about what I can do. And I'm just going to start maybe picking one at a time and just start figuring things out and start challenging myself to, to, to create a new life for me after, after the job. You know, we don't want to put our whole life into work. It's, I love work and it's very important that everybody, you know, obviously we have to make a living, but also you have to do you. It's so important to do you. And then and then how often are you really like I said, like I said, stepping outside of your body, looking down and challenging yourself, how am I really living? Am I taking the time to do other facets of my life or am I getting addicted to my job? And hold yourself accountable for that too. So be able to step back, slow yourself down, be patient with yourself, say, Okay, I caught myself, you know, the last two months. I've been working, you know, 100 hours a week and I really have time, didn't take the time to do all the things that I really love to do. And it's, that's when you really hold yourself accountable and you start to, one at a time, start to add these things back into your life. And that's the thing. Once again, if we're not completely present in every moment, we can get out of focus and we can just get into that, into that work world and just, you know, not think about that stuff and, you know, hold yourself accountable. For how you want to live your life because you know when retirement does come which it will come in everybody's lifetime what do you have then you know make sure that you have something in your life that you can grow from 100 percent. so with so, including social interactions and friends back into your daily life and doing it on a consistent basis how do you tell if somebody is actually a part of your inner circle and then how do you tell if they're just an acquaintance on the exterior and aren't the best connection for you? Well, mostly it's a vibration. So vibrationally, if you are on a high vibration or a low vibration, it's feeling into and looking at your network of friends, looking at the people that are around you. If they do not serve you, not, not serve you as in give you things, but serve you in a positive way, you'll realize that. As you get in a more positive place, as you understand more things about your life and other facets of your life and actually have that true self-love, you'll understand that the people that are not supposed to be in your life, they will slowly wither away. Now, is it that they're bad people? No, not at all. Is it that they've been bad to you? Maybe, maybe not. But what it is, is your pack will either grow in a different way or it'll just get smaller. And in the end, you know, it, it, it's kind of a funny saying, but as you get older, your pack gets a lot smaller. And it's it's what is truly important to me when it comes to my friends. And it's taking the time to eyes wide open. Look at your friends. And if anybody is is, you know, I, I come from a place where in the, in the suburb of Chicago, there was a lot of sarcastic. My language, 95 percent of the time was sarcastic. I did not even realize that that in itself was passive aggressive. That in itself was on a low vibration. So if you're around people where all you're doing per se is talking shit, you know, that in itself is low vibration. Now those people, if that's what you need to communicate, they may, they may be as you get in a different facet of your life on a different vibration to you. Like I said, doesn't mean that they're bad people, but they haven't come to that point to truly understand how they want to live their life in a positive way. That brings them to, that keeps them in that little, that little area of low vibration of limbo. And your vibration, like I said, we are intricate magnets. Your vibration is going to is magnetically going to cling to the people that are like you. So if you're in a low vibration, you're in, a, in, in you're in a spot where you're working too much and you're depressed all the time. You look at the people and you look at the things around you. They're probably going to match. You bring yourself to where 
everything is in a, in, a, in a different light and you understand everything about your life. You have so much more self-love. You've done all the work inside. You feel really good about your position in life. You feel really good about what you're doing. You're going to open up your eyes and you're going to see that the people around you are also in that way. You know, uh, another fun example of the bar business. So for 25 years, when I was sarcastic and I'll call people out and even though I was having fun, I was very strict with the people in, in a certain way. A lot of my clients, not all, but a lot of my clients were, it was nuts. I've had to jump the bar. I've had to stop fights, you know, you know, put people in chokes, um, have people that are, you know, yelling profanity at you, all this low vibration. I had no idea that I was on that vibration because I had not done the inner work. Now, the last couple of years of my career, when I had done the inner work, I had always kind of joked about it with my fiance. I was like, man, I'm like, today I just met this woman. She worked with Dalai Lama. I met this nice couple. I said what I do, you know, how I'm a life coach and I, and I, and, and, you know, the, the life that I live now. And all of a sudden the, the kid pulls out a, a, a pouch of crystals. I'm like, you know, everything around the bar ended up, or it started to become, everybody was just like these spiritual high vibration, very happy go lucky, um, wanted, you know, wanting to be in a position to change, had already changed. My clients were completely different. And the clients that were literally regulars for years, they were not coming in anymore. And I, you know, for at first I had thought, oh, they're just not coming in. That's kind of weird. But then I realized that my vibration was so high, it wasn't magnetic to them anymore. So they went to other places where they actually fit in on that vibration. So, quick little side note, what was your go to choke in the bar business? <laughs> <laughs> So it's usually a chi one chicken wing under and one around the throat. <laughs> and depending on how big they were, I'd have to hold out for dear life. A couple of uh, couple of rangers and a couple of marines, you know, I had to hold out for dear life sometimes. But uh, that was usually uh, that was usually what I went for, for. Never to hurt anybody, but just to just to uh, hold them back. And luckily, you know, I grew up wrestling since I was pretty much born, so it was very natural for me. But uh, it was the last. It was my least favorite thing to do. Uh, when it came to uh, that business, for sure. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I love how you talk about times change and your inner circle be in your inner circle dwindles and you become more close with the fewer and fewer people that are a part of that inner circle. As that inner circle is changing and you get more and more peer pressure from outside of that circle, what you told me previously is this great saying, if you're fitting in, you're fucking up. Describe the meaning behind that and how people can use that saying to to stay aligned with who they truly are and not get caught up in all the peer pressure. So once again, I mean, when it comes to that, you're if you're fitting in, you're fucking up. So, you know, I, this resonates with everybody at any age, but truly it resonates a lot when it comes to the younger folks, you know, because so many people. They want to fit in. They want to have a group. They want it. They don't understand why they don't have a lot of friends at an early age. And what I always explain to people is, you know, your family lives in an area. You know, you grew up in an area. That doesn't mean those kids are all your vibration. It doesn't mean that that's your pack. It just means that that's where your parents resided at the time when they needed to buy a house. And it just happened to be in that neighborhood. Don't put so much stress onto the people around as to fitting in or being inside of a group. Be unapologetically yourself. Find out what you truly love in life. Do that. Get get very good at that. Be comfortable in your own skin, and you will vibrate to your pack. You will magnetically find your pack as you get older. Um, you know, an, another. You know, I, I it's it's funny because I quite often go back to the bar business, but I mean, you know, for years and years and years, I was part of I was part of the whole creation of Old Town Scottsdale, and in Old Town. It, it started out where it was live music, laid back, um, you know, T-shirt and shorts, and nobody really cared. It was just a fun atmosphere. Then all of a sudden, the lounges and clubs started to move in, and it was all about who worked at the cool spot, who worked at the hip spot. And you truly – there were so many people that I always kind of laughed because in the neighborhood I grew up in, my bullshit meter was always through the roof. So when I looked at these guys, I'm like, wait a second. So this is so-called the coolest kids in town, but these kids would literally almost be made fun of in the town that I grew up in. And I never really understood it, but it was funny because, you know, eyes wide open, 
You had a bunch of people trying to fit in. And that's why I always I always excelled. And I never worked at these so-called spots. I worked at spots that, that were either spots outside of that spectrum, or I got to be a part of making it a spot with a couple of the other people. Because once again, I was unapologetic in myself and I never tried to fit in. I never tried to be a, a, a part of a group. I always just was myself. And because I was so happy and I was so magnetic and such a big personality, people clung to me. People, you know, and, and, and by the end of my career, I was very lucky to have been, you know, the cover of many newspapers uh, and magazines on TV shows on all these different things. And it was not because I tried to be a part of something special. It was just because I was unapologetic in myself. And that's what I mean by if you're fitting in, you're fucking up. Don't try to fit into anything. That's where you're fucking up. It's just be unapologetically yourself. And don't care. Don't put too, so much stress onto the things around you. Just fall in love with yourself. And when you fall in love with yourself, that ripple effect will in turn cling you onto the people that are supposed to be in your life. And if it's not a lot of people, that's the way it's supposed to be. But still, you truly need to fall in love with yourself. That's the biggest part. And that leads me to my final question, which is now that you know all that you know about life, what advice would you give your past self, 18 to 25 years of age, on how to live a fulfilled and meaningful life right now at, at that age? Whew. So I would, uh, I mean, the advice that I give myself back then was to, before you react, feel into what you're reacting to. Um, a saying that I am, am, you know, I'm working with a lot of athletes right now. And uh, one of the things that I'm really talking about is eyes wide open. Um, back when I was around those ages, I was very reactive. I definitely had a little bit of the South side in me. And then I also had some, some lineage when it came to a quick reaction, a quick anger reaction to certain things. And when it came to people that wronged me, I held on to it forever. I, I really was. I was that guy where if you wronged me, if I see you two, three years later, I'm going to eye you down and I'm going to want to come at you. Whether I did or not, it was something that was always in my mind and it drove me crazy. It literally drove me crazy. And what I've realized now is eyes wide open means, okay, the person that wronged you or the, the, the something that happened, eyes wide open as to why did that happen? Or what is it about that person would make him or her do something wrong to you? Now, it's not about you, obviously. It's not happening to you. It's happening for you. So what exactly is it? And then I, what I would do is I'd look, at, I'd look at each of those situations. And this is what I've done to get to the point that I'm at today is I go back in each of those situations and I look at that person. I'm like, okay, wait a second. How was his parenting? If his parenting was probably horrible or the family had had problems, whatever it might be, I understand now why he took that on. Now, when I look at him even closer, he was pretty miserable. Even though he seemed like he was on top of the world, he was actually miserable at that time. So then misery loves company. So what he was doing was he was challenging somebody who had the light in them and he was challenging with his negativity. And what happened was he knew he'd get a reaction out of me. And so what I did was I'd react and all of a sudden now misery loves company. Now it's got company because I'm miserable too. Because when I'm on that low vibration, I'm, I'm in a miserable state of mind. So now I'm eyes wide open and I've gone back to each and every one of those people that had so-called wronged me. And I look at it now and I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, you know what? When I teach what this taught me is that I have gratitude, even in the sense of my dad. You know, I held so many things so intensely about my dad, but then I realized what his teachings were from two World War II vets. And he just wasn't taught how to be a parent. And a lot of parents were never really taught how to be parents. So I had all this anger to him. And I was like, oh, my God, eyes wide open. I see you now. I see that you now have a chance. So now I actually have gratitude for not only seeing what, is, what it's like to come from that background, but also now I'm eyes wide open to seeing how I want to live my life. I have gratitude because fortunately, unfortunately, I had to go through that so that I can know the difference between how I want to show up in my life and how I could have shown up in my life. Because we could just take on from our parents the same thing, and that same loop will happen in our lives, and all of a sudden we have kids, and we treat them the same way that our parents do, and we wake up 
20 years later, we're like, oh my God, I did the same thing. Holy cow, I'm in limbo. I wasn't present in every moment to even understand what I was doing. So now, once again, I'm eyes wide open to every single facet of my life. And that's what I would teach myself. And that's truly what I, uh, anybody who's in high school or college or anywhere else that I, that I talk to them about is eyes wide open. Like truly, don't just look at the things that happen to you. Look at where it came from. Look at where it stemmed from. It's deeper than just what you think on the surface. It's so much deeper. When you understand the true puzzle as to where all those pieces started and then how they got put together, it will put you in a different vibration as to understanding your life. And then you can live in that high vibration because once again, as everything comes in, you can easily navigate now because you've navigated your whole past life and it's easier. It puts you in a position to where everything is truly understandable. So that's, I mean, that would be the, the biggest thing that I would tell myself is just eyes wide open. Don't react. Once again, feel the feels, stop, breathe, navigate. What am I feeling right now? Am I available for this? Am I not available for this? And then declare how I want to show up in my life. Am I going to learn from that and show up in my life? the way that's positive, the way that's high vibration, or am I going to hold on to that? Am I going to live in a low vibration to where that affects me every day? And that doesn't help anybody out. And like I said, for me, I live in one place. I live in high vibration, positivity, love, gratitude, all the different adjectives that, that, that puts you in a, in a, just a beautiful, beautiful spot 24 hours a day. <laughs> and with that, that concludes this episode, the 5EP podcast. This is Al Petrowski, your host, tuning off. Thank you for joining. Have a great week. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the 5EP podcast with Al Petrowski. Interviews and conversations to guide the genesis of personal development. If you enjoyed the show, share it with friends and family and on your social media. And feel free to send us your feedback. Until next time, thank you for listening and live your 5 exclamation point life every day. <laughs>